All right, hello and welcome. Today the video is on Monk 6, that's open hand Monk, 3 Battlemaster Fighter, and 3 Thief. The leveling order is not exactly that, but we'll get to all of that later. For now, let me just show you this. Nice 70, that's not bad at all. That's uh, even more than 70 on that. That's 80, 93 for a flurry. Forty-eight, fifty-eight, sixty-eight, seventy-eight, fifteen, ninety-three again for the flurry. Oh, and look at that action surge. Dead. I can't, I can't reach him, can I? <laughs> Gotta end somewhere. But yeah, I could have hit for another 70-ish here. So, in total, with the initial one, we'll count that as part of it. 70, 94, 93 or whatever, 93, and 70 again, and could have got one more. And actually, two if I had uh, started this out, round out, right? And so, really, that's over 300 damage around with the action surge. There's only two-something without the action surge. This is this would be the exact amount you would do without action surge, so it would be 140 plus 180, so we've got 320 DPR, no action surge. All right, now let's, as always, figure out how we get there. <clears throat> now this build you will be starting off as Monk, as I said, open hand Monk. Now we're going to be doing our stats such that your dex will be 16, con 17, wisdom 15. That's two odd numbers, which usually we don't like odd numbers, but we're going to be taking Tavern Brawler, and so that'll take care of the con odd number. And then, in terms of the wisdom, we won't actually deal with that number that's odd for a long time, so you can t leave the wisdom at 14 and put your strength or something at 10. But, as you'll see here, this is after I've used my Elixir, Elixir of Hill Giant Strength, very common in monk builds. And after I've gotten Tavern Brawler, so now my eight, con is 18. Makes you a little heftier in the early game. As you see, I have 39 total health. 15 AC, which isn't amazing, but it's not bad. Now, in the early items, um, I took an old file of mine, so I want to show you some items that I haven't really shown much in the early game. These are ones you might have if you don't have access to some of the better ones. Now, the Haste Helm always the case. Momentum for three turns, great. Especially for a monk who already gets a bonus movement speed, this means you're always in melee at your target. Robe of Summer, pretty good little mediocre early game robe. Resistance to cold damage. Cold damage doesn't come up much, but not many robes come up much early game either. So, Robe of Summer it is. Gloves of the Growling Underdog. These are good because they give you advantage on melee attacks while surrounded by two or more foes, which... Again, in the early game, that comes up a lot, especially when you hit the goblin camp. There's a lot of goblins, and they're often surrounding you. So, free advantage. Great. Swires' shoes increase jump distance, also helps with closing the gap if you need to, although you generally, as a monk at this level, be using your bonus actions for flurries instead. Moondrop Pendant, a way to not get opportunity attacks when you're a bit low, and like I said, monk's already a little squishy, so this is fine. Another one that's based on when you're 50% or less, you get a little extra movement. Spurred Band is fun and decent in the early game. And finally, Ring of Poison Resistance. So, we got Poison and Frost Resistance, which is kind of nice for early game stuff. But otherwise, this is a pretty generic build, and it does okay damage just by the fact that it's an open hand monk with Tavern Brawler. We don't need to go too much more into that. For anyone who doesn't know, Tavern Brawler open hand monk is one of the highest damage builds in the game. 
that's partially why I use it here, but as you saw, the actual focus of this build is based on psychic damage. And we'll get into how this all interacts in a little bit. Now here at level 6, we'll have hit the max level of open hand monk that we're going to be putting levels into. So we'll be level 6 open hand. We haven't multi-classed yet. Now, gear has changed a little bit. Helm and robe are the same. Boots are the same. Ring, uh, one change to Crusher's ring. Standard good movement speed. Beyond that, only thing that really changes is the sparkle hands. Now, the sparkle hands is an amazing weapon. Or, not weapon, excuse me. Amazing gloves, but for a monk, it operates like a weapon. Because on hit with an unarmed attack, the wearer gains two lightning charges. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start doing flurries, each flurry is two unarmed attacks, so you gain four lightning charges per flurry, which means per turn, at level six, you're putting out one flurry and two normal attacks. That's four total attacks. That's eight potential lightning charges. And then just to boot, you get advantage against any foes or constructs wearing metal armor while you have lightning charges. Amazing gloves. Some of the best for Monk in the entire game. I suggest using these as long as you can. And um, this build right now is still pretty just normal standard Monk. Nothing special yet. The special parts of this build don't come in until a little bit later, as we're about to see. At level 8 is when you'll start getting the gear to support the build that you see at the end. But I will let you know that you still shouldn't be actually equipping this gear until you get out of Act 2. I'll explain a little bit more why, but it, it has to do with the item Resonance Stone. Now, Resonance Stone you only can obtain once you go into the Illithid Colony at the end of Act 2. Now... I'll, I'll explain more about why Resident Stone is so good later, but for right now, I'll just show you some of the items we have now got. As you see, there's a lot of different items here now. One of them will be the Graceful Cloth. Amazing armor. Best monk armor you can wear in the early game, without a doubt. The plus two dex is nice, but the nimble as a cat... Uh, sorry, not, not nimble as a cat here. That, that's nice too, but the, above it, the cat's grace. It doesn't doesn't really explain what that means, you gain Cat's Grace, but has advantage on dex checks and only takes half damage from falling. Advantage from dex checks is a big deal, because now it means all your stealth, all your sleight of hand, they're all at advantage. You put this on anyone who's trying to be your party's rogue, basically, or the person who opens locks or doors, and man, it's free. Okay, so besides that, we got finally a cloak, Cloak of Protection, plus one AC, plus one saving throws, standard, good. Another one that's standard good is the Disintegrating Nightwalkers. Can't be in webbed, entangled, or ensnared, and can't slip on grease or ice. Free use of Misty Step. Fantastic boots. These are some of the best boots in the game from the mid till the late. Now, then, um, I'll show you one more item. Certain Subjugation Amulet. Once per long rest, when scoring a critical hit on a humanoid, the wearer can paralyze the target for two turns. This makes uh, a lot of sense for this build, because since you're putting out so many attacks, if you crit once... Now any future attacks against that target are basically going to be crit once you paralyze them. Because when you paralyze someone, attacks against entities are always critical hits if the attacker is within 10 feet. So this is just a way to get free crits on a class that throws out a lot of dice. Now, there's three items I haven't mentioned yet. Now, I will mention them all, but I will say that these are actually not to be worn yet. These two rings and this helmet. These, I, I, I got them here, but and you could wear them. They can work in your build, but it's very much optimal to wait. Now, <clears throat> we, we took level 2 rogue here, so we could get cutting action, but really because we're going to get thief on the next level. We still have the sparkle hands, but now we'll talk about these gears, okay? <clears throat> Diadem of Arcane Synergy. When you inflict a condition, gain Arcane Synergy for two rounds. Now, Arcane Synergy only works with weapon attacks. That's partly why this I'm grouping with the two rings. Now, as an open hand monk, you're usually not using weapon hand weapon attacks. But then we got this item here. Shadow Blade Ring. Very interesting item. Shadow Blade. Let you cast Shadow Blade. Concentration, short rest, bonus action. <clears throat> Weave a shadowy sword sword that in your hand that deals 2 to 16 psychic damage. When you use the sword to attack a target that is in dim light or darkness, you make attack with advantage. Um, and it can be unequipped and re-equipped. 
but it requires concentration, so that kind of sucks, but we're not much of a caster, so we don't have much to concentrate on besides this anyway. So now I could, if I were playing this level, I could wear this blade. This will get benefit from my Diadem of Arcane's Energy and Strange Conduit Ring while concentrating on a spell, the wearer's weapon attack deals an additional 1 to 4 Psychic. Now, obviously we are always concentrating now. So this is just 1 to 4 extra Psychic on your 2d8 plus 4 Psychic. The reason Shadow Blade is so important is because 100% of its damage is Psychic. Most weapons that have an extra type of damage will be a base piercing or slashing or blunt, bludgeoning, and then they'll add an element or Psychic or some such radiant, right? This blade is only psychic, and that is a big deal, it turns out. But like I said, at these levels, you would not be wearing these, because the reason it's a big deal is what I was talking about earlier, the Resonance Stone. Until, until then, you can wear a, a lot of things. I mean, there's a, a good number of choices. Um, Ring of Mental Inhibition is actually pretty good on an open hand monk, because each one of your flurries has a chance to do a special effect. And so this means this will trigger every time you use one. Or use your Stunning Strike. And um, it, it, com it combines with some stuff that's nice later. Or just helps your party. <clears throat> you can also wear um, something simple like the Fetish of Kalardurin Smooth Hands to get invisibility. Um, we have... This is also weapons only, so not that. <laughs> And uh, if, no, if nothing better, just wear, you know, more Crusher's Ring and uh, Spurred Band until later. And then for Helmet, you can just throw on... Well, we can wear Light Armor now, but you want to keep it unarmored still. So probably wear the circlet here or one, this circlet, one of the nice little circlets, until you get to the Illithid Colony, which is about the next level. So I just wanted to put that all in there. That's when you get those items, but remember, we're not using them really till level 9. And now at level 10, once we're outside the colony, you'll get to see what actually has changed. And that main thing is, like I told you at the beginning, was Resonance Stone. Now I'll start describing it. Um, the Resonance Stone, since we'll have it now, does an aura effect. It's something you keep in your inventory, but affects everyone around you. It gives you and your party members and enemies all of these different buffs. Now, it doesn't say any here. Look, it's not very special. But when you look here, it gives you this buff right here. Or debuff, as you might consider it. Steeped in Bliss. Now, Steeped in Bliss doesn't sound great because it has a nice advantage on physical checks, but disadvantage on mental saving throws. And also, vulnerable to psychic damage. Now, again, this doesn't sound great, except this, both the good and the bad, is to us and to all enemies around us, and allies. So as a monk, you're going to be thick into the melee side of combat. So that means you can throw on your Shadow Blade, and at these levels, with this, you'll see even Gale here, steeped in bliss. And let's make sure I don't have... Uh, yep, yeah, okay. So now, I want to mention this last time, but I, I, uh, I thought it would be better to bring up once I have the stone. With Open Hand Monk, you get to choose one of three passive elemental damages. Necrotic, Psychic, or Radiant. Now, this is a Psychic build, so we are picking Psychic. This means now that your unarmed attacks deal an additional 4 to 7 Psychic. Which means your flurries deal an additional 8 to 14 Psychic. Which, doubled by the Resonance Stone, means you're doing 16 to 28 Psychic her flurry. Doesn't sound like a ton, but we saw at the end how these numbers really add up. Now, we'll look over the other items to add in real quick. So, you'll see also here, I did change the stats a bit. We have to respec when we hit level 10, because the first level we get fighter, and it's the first time we want to put our fighter level first. This will give us access to heavier armor, but I didn't wear heavier armor. On the other hand, it also gives us... <coughs> The, uh, the time to change our stat here, which is we want to have the 17 higher decks because we have now items like these boots 
the uh, additional damage equal to your wisdom modifier for unarmed. And then we also have the uh, passive here. So this, this damage is based on your wisdom as well. And besides all that, having fighter in your first slot will make you have proficiency in con saves. This is important because if you remember, Shadow Blade is concentration. And if we want to keep concentration on it, we need proficiency in con saves. Okay, so other items we added. Now these rings are the ones I showed you last time. We've added finally a bow. We didn't really have a good bow up until now. This is just Dark Fire Short Bow. It gives you two resistances as well as haste. The use of haste is not too bad and can give you something to uh, concentrate on if your Shadow Blade is down. Which does happen, especially before you hit max level. Um, for a necklace, I just wore the Corvid token. This one's fun, and I like turning into a bird. If you like having fun, this one might be for you. If not, keep the other uh, paralyzed one on, or something like that. And then we put this helmet back on, the Diadem of Arcadian Synergy. But we now wear the Cloak of Displacement, one of the best cloaks in the game. You can also wear the Dirge Cloak here, which is what I did in my Honor Run. But on this one, I only wore the Cloak of Displacement. We, this was not a Dirge Run. Okay, so... Even now, you would be able to see that when I hit someone... I can't hit him with a seek attack, can I? No, that's okay. Actually. So, just to show what I'm doing here. So, I want to show this. This actually didn't add the sneak attack damage because I hit him too hard. But this is the damage before the sneak attack. Now, any sneak attack dice that would add here, which would be 2d6 only, will actually be doubled too, because any sneak attack you do does the base damage of the weapon you're using. The weapon I'm using is Psychic. So now my sneak attack, my 2d6, that's an average of only 7 damage. But that 7 becomes 14, so that would have added onto this to make it 74. That This is where the numbers start really getting high. And... Um, that's why we'll go straight into level 12. It's a very simple build. But the reason we went fighter as the uh, third class was what I'm about to show you here. Is Once we get up to three fighter, we get to pick a subclass and we're picking battle master. Now, the main um, maneuvers you want to pick for this are menacing attack and riposte. The third one you can kind of choose on your own. I picked maneuvering attack on my on my first test when I ran this in honor mode. But it didn't come up very often. On this second test, I tried sweeping attack, but the damage is extremely low. So I suggest menacing and riposte, which you can't see here because it's a, it's a reaction. Riposte. But Riposte will give you a way to attack back, which is fun. And honestly, we don't use our uh, our superiority dice that much. They come back on short rest, just like our key. So that's why we did Battlemaster Monk. Everything comes back on short rest. You have a lot of power per short rest. Um, and But even without the superiority dice, we actually have an access to a maneuver that costs nothing. That is because of a new addition, the Bone Spike Helmet. When you rage, hostile creatures in a 10-foot radius, blah, blah, blah. That part doesn't matter. I do wish it kind of did, because the psychic damage would be nice in our build. But, the second part of it there... I mean, Intimidate plus 2, that's nice. But really what we're here for is Menacing Attack. This is once per turn. Not per short rest, not per long rest, per turn. That means we have one free maneuver every turn. And as you see... With our uh, elixir up, with our, uh, da our uh, ring up, and with our dueling and other such, we are doing a total of 2d8 plus 10 plus 1d4 plus 1. 17 to 34 psychic. That's before it's doubled by vulnerability. Now, besides the bone spike helmet, this is another very important item. We got a couple really important items that come here really only at the end. I could have got this one a little earlier, but I didn't have the gold. Robe of Supreme Defenses. While concentrating, hint hint, you add your spell cost casting modifi ability modifier to your saving throws and gain a plus one bonus to armor class. Because of this, and because of the fact that our Wiz is now 18, our con 
we get four from con, four from proficiency, and four from supreme defenses. A plus 12 to our con concentration checks basically means we'll almost never uh, break concentration, meaning we'll almost never lose the dagger. Now, this isn't true if we get knocked prone. Prone is the one way we really generally still lose the dagger, so we want to watch out for that. Mobs that prone either kill them first or avoid them. Now, another really important item. This is the best monk gloves in the game. For almost every monk build, these are the gloves you're going to use. Gloves of Soul Catching. Your unarmed attacks deal an additional 1 to 10 force damage. Once per turn, on an unarmed hit, you regain 10 hit points. Free 10 hit point regain. Alternatively, you may forego healing to gain advantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the end of your next turn. And it gives a plus 2 to your con to boot. Amazing gloves. These, these are from a very high level end encounter, so rush it if you need to, but otherwise um, you won't get these till the end. Now, boots of uninhibited Kushigo, I showed you these. They just give wisdom to unarmed strikes. These rings are the same. We, we put on the dead shot. Um, gives you a crit range so that you actually just do a little extra damage. We're already throwing around a good amount of dice thanks to uh, the shadow blade and such, as you see here. And so critting with the Shadow Blade is pretty nice. Uh, besides the Deadshot, though, there was one more item. Khalid's Gift. Now, this one, for a lot of builds, isn't that great. But because we had that odd wisdom, this allows us to take it to 18. The other part um, cannot be cursed. <laughs> That's only for Jahira, so it doesn't matter. Unless you want to make your character Jahira, that could be fun. But curses don't come up that much anyway, so not that big a deal. It also gives you a free use of aid. So your monk who already has a lower HP than some will now have a higher HP than most, as you see in my party here. And well, beyond that, there's not much else to say. It's very straightforward. Let's see how it fights. It's very consistent because monk is very consistent thanks to Tavern Brawler. Now, Tavern Brawler adds your strength an extra time to your hit and damage with unarmed attacks. Because of this, your flurries are almost assured. Now, because we're using menacing attack, menacing attack, besides doing extra damage, which is partly why we use it, we also are potentially frightening our enemies. Now, one of our flurries is flurry topple. Topple is good because it knocks things prone. When you combine this with the fact that, so here's topple, chance to prone. And when you combine this with, <clears throat> with the fact that menacing attack is a chance to frighten, I've explained this before in other videos, but for anyone who doesn't know, when you frighten and prone a target, that target cannot stand up off the ground. So this is a way not only for you to do a ton of damage with a build, but to lock down a boss and not let them ever get up. So we'll start it off as the first. I won't won't crit her this time. Just hit her for normal. And this is the fight I always like to use. But you're gonna see as as we do this, I'm gonna make pretty quick work of these guys. Dead. Dead. Oh, we'll give this guy the crit. And see, that guy didn't get crit, but he still took a good 70 damage. Okay, so this was around with action surge, but. If we, if we take out that first attack we did that was before combat, this was actually a normal round of attacks. So let's see. This is 42, 63, 73, 79, 86, 106, 110, 122, 129, 149, 152, 162, 171. And then 140 more 
So that's 311 on a normal round. I did make one auto crit for this one. But it, it didn't really do a, a high roll. I mean, as you see here, this one rolled almost as high just because it rolled max damage on those 2d8. Um, but still, over 300 damage with, no, with, with not counting the fact that I could have action surged for an extra 140. So about 450 damage when you action surge. Now, I, again, this character only has a 18 AC, but with things like deflect missiles, I mean, even your deflect missiles is doing extra psychic damage and saving you from taking damage. And 18 AC is about as tanky as you need to be in this game to really survive long enough. Especially for a character with this much damage output. Having more AC is good, but only if you need to stick around for more rounds. I should be able to wipe out the rest of these in two rounds. So let's go on to the lady here, who's a little bit heftier. Oh. <laughs> Okay, topple. So she's prone. That was 110 damage. <laughs> now here, I tried to show you this earlier. It didn't show, but here you'll see this is the sneak attack damage. But as it added psychic, it also makes them vulnerable to it. So again, that's a 62 hit. Now since she's almost dead, I'll just finish her off. 72 crit, that's why we're wearing the dead shot. And I'll walk up and just finish him. Oh, you're still here. And now, here's that free 10 healing from um, the gloves. I forgot to do it last round, but that's okay. I don't even need to do this, but I'll do it just to show it can be done. Boom, dead. And yeah, I could have done the uh, base one first, but I knew I was going to go hit this lady right after, so it is what it is. Bop, bop. And dead. And as you see, very consistent damage. I barely took any damage myself. This build is awesome. It, it seems like to some that you might be doing a little bit less than normal open hand, but because of the doubling the vulnerable you get from the Steeped in Bliss, it totally makes everything worth it. Um, beyond this, you can also you know use some of the Illithid powers if you want. I turned all mine off here, um, like calling the weak and stuff, but they also benefit from it. Mind, uh, mind Blast doubles its damage, so potentially 70 damage Mind Blast AoE stuns. Um, yeah. I, I've been enjoying testing Resonance Stone recently. I will probably have another couple builds utilizing it sometime soon. So if you enjoyed this, let me know and let me know what else you want to see. Thanks, everyone, for watching.